in this video today, I'm going to share with you three very powerful ways that you can build a personal brand. I head up a leadership platform for women leaders. And this is one of the things, at least three of the things that I usually teach when they are coming to me to work on their personal brand. So the very first thing that I ask a lot of my new clients to work on is something called a bullshit audit. It's a phrase that I stole from Ryan Serhant, who is a top real estate broker here in New York City. One of the things that he did when he was really starting this trajectory of success is that he did a bullshit audit, which is that he went to six people, six trusted friends in his world that were not yes people, that were not going to tell him what he wanted to hear. They were going to be true and they were going to be honest about the things that were gaps in his professionalism, in his in the way he presented himself, in the way that he walked into a room. And so this bullshit audit is something that I encourage my clients to do, is to go into their world, ask six people questions such as, what's the image that I portray when I first walk into the room? What's the first impression that I give? There are areas in my professionalism where you're seeing gaps. Where could I be improving? And then the biggest one, the most important one, what is that one word that you associate with me? Think about some of the big thought leaders of our time, Seth Godin, marketing, Tim Ferriss, four-hour work week, uh, Mel Robbins, the five-second rule. There's one thing that that person is known for. And you want to be able to ferret out what that is because once you know it, you can pick which one you want to start to amplify as part of your brand. Tip number two comes from an interview that I did with Carol Sankar. She is a real estate investor, and she also spends a lot of time working on confidence with women leaders. And one of the things that I love that she shared is called start the rumor. In other words, you want to start the rumor of the thing that you want to be known for with people that are already in your circle. Before you know it, you're going to find that people are starting to repeat that to other people and other people, and that rumor becomes a fact. I'm a builder, right? Although, I, by comparison to many of the men who are 30 years ahead of me, I'm 10 years in, I'm a builder. But they don't know that, yeah, okay, I haven't built the 50 unit yet. I'm, I'm close. I'm very, very close. This was a, a profound year for me. So I, I, I do this whole thing. 2023, I'm building my 50 unit. Mm -hmm. I haven't started yet, though. Got the land. Have not started yet. But it's the fact of starting the rumor now for future intention on bragging later. Mm -hmm. And it's not about it not being true. It is your possibility the same way you journal. You have to allow people to now know who you are becoming. Otherwise, you'd miss the opportunity to become who you are about to become. So if you don't start the rumors early enough, you won't introduce yourself intentionally to the people who are going to be your advocates, your supporters, your support systems, your allies, you'll miss them because now you haven't started the rumors that are going to allow people to want to invest in you and not just financially, but invest their time into your success. So start it now and make it plain and let people start being attracted to you that way. Of course, there are things that people are perceiving about you, but you have 100% control over the narrative as well. So that's why I love that tip. You are also verbally and non-verbally, because we know about 70% of our communication is non-verbal, but verbally, you are leaving a veritable breadcrumb trail that people are recording, whether you realize it or not. I'll give you an example. So Michael Jordan is obviously a very successful basketball player. And when someone would ask him, hey, how many championships have you won? At the time, if he had won two, he would hold up three fingers. Why? Because he was subliminally and saying and already putting into creation that he was, in fact, going to already win the next championship. So instead of saying the two that had already happened, he said three because that meant that he was going to win the next one as well. So what kind of like verbal and nonverbal breadcrumbs are you leaving without even realizing it? Carol talks about that as well. Men are expected to say what they have to do and put a period at the end, we have this idea that we have to give an excuse, an understanding. We have to have a, an entire label full of uh, prepositional yeah, phrases. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like, what are we talking about? Like, I can't make the meeting, period. I can't come to the event, period. Not because I, not because I'm sick, not because, because the kids are, we, we share way too many, much information. And those verbal cues, what most women do not realize is it works against you because the only thing people hear after I can't 
is whatever the verbal cue is. And because I used to be in law firm America, if you said kids, the first thing that they did on the partner list is put down, Carol has kids. Mm -hmm. So they know there's no partnership opportunity here because every two minutes, her two little kids get sick. So we can't even put her down on the leadership list, cross off. I can't make it because my car doesn't work. Oh, okay. Carol has old car. Verbal mm -hmm. cues. You're setting yourself up. Has old car, does not know how to use Uber. Uh, I have no babysitter. Pen. She has no baby. It, it starts adding up. And before you know it, you want to sit in the C-suite and somebody else has a notebook full of all of your because I's. Because I, because I, because I, not thinking how this is accumulating. And for those of you who have businesses, oh my gosh, this this will backfire. Because somebody will ask you, so how are your kids doing today? I remember they were sick yesterday. Remember, you missed a meeting, not because of the kids, but you just missed a meeting. Instead of saying, I couldn't make it. Now someone says, I don't know if I'm going to invest in you. Mm. Because I because you have kids. <laughs> Going back to the verbal cue, because you can't make meetings, because you're always late, because you have to leave early, because because it starts coming back to you. So use your verbal cues. The moment you hear yourself getting ready to give that excuse or give that reasoning and overshare, stop. We it is go time. My mastermind kicks off January 21st. We have one more slot left. If you would like to build a personal brand, you're at that level in your career. You already have a big career behind you. You're building the next thing as a woman leader, but you want to know what are you known for? What's that thing that's going to nest on top of the thing that you're building for 2023? We have one more spot. We have an amazing elite group of women that are already in this group. And so if you would like to have me be your shepherd, through 2023 and do the work, I would love to have you. All you got to do is DM me at joya at joyadas.com. P.S. Of course, if you've been following me on social, you know that I lead with an element of adventure, better known as adventure leadership. So there are some big adventures planned for this year.